Hi, I'm Benjamin Bell of This Week with George Stephanopoulos, and I'm joined today by New York Times Magazine Chief National Correspondent Mark Leibovich, who's also the author of the new book, This Town. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Ben. Good to be here. And because we believe all politics is social at This Week, we're going to put some of the questions that you submitted on Facebook and Twitter to Mark. So we had a lot of questions about your new book, and the first one comes from uh, at Bex58 on Twitter, and he says, how about you discuss something that people outside the Beltway might be actually interested in? So is this book only for insiders? A absolutely not. In fact, I think people from the inside who read this um, will probably know a lot, and I think people outside you know, will have a lot more to learn. I mean, frankly, this book was geared to people outside of town because I don't think... Um, people have a full appreciation of, of how, not so much how bad it's gotten, but, but what Washington really looks like and what the whole carnival of it looks like. And this sort of, someone described it as a peep, a peep show into the carnival. And I, I do think that um, it, it's a way for people to have a fuller understanding of, of the machine and, and what's happened. Linda McFarlane on Facebook writes, Washington, D.C. works by who has the most money and how they can make more. Um, so how important is money in, in Washington? And you write about this in, in your book. Mm -hmm. Well, it's huge. I mean, money is, I think, the single biggest transformative um, thing in Washington over the last decade. I mean, this is the, the most wealthy metropolitan area in the country right now. Um, there's more money in politics than there ever, ever has been. I mean, corporations are paying attention to it. Hollywood's paying attention to it. The media's paying attention to it. Um, so. I mean, yeah, I mean, people, it used to be that people would come to Washington to make a difference, and you still hear that, but I think Washington has become a city where people come to get rich, which was not true before. Our, our last viewer question comes from uh, uh, Michael Scar, and, and he says, what needs to happen to change things in Washington, D.C., and is change realistic, or do we have to live with this forever? Well, I mean, look, I, I don't know. I, I do think that what we've seen is that people in Washington will act when it's in their own self-interest to act. And I, I do think that the, that the American system and, frankly, the American people are capable of, whether it's shaming or whether it's just moving their government, kicking and screaming sometimes, into some kind of change. And whether it's a third-party candidate or whether it's some kind of term limits or whether it's some sweeping new law, um, I don't know. But I think, I mean, if you look at things like immigration now or even gay marriage, I mean, a lot of this just starts you know, from the populists and or from the states and, and sort of works its way up. But ultimately, though, no one is going to do anything unless it really hurts them. So. Now on to our, our lightning round. Um, who is the current ultimate Washington insider right now? Current Washington insider right now. Um, let me see. Well, the it'll, ultimate uh, insider. Well, people, of course, will accuse me of being that person now. Of course, I think I'm sort of handling that. Um, I would say, I mean, Robert Barnett, uh, maybe. I mean, he's, a, he's an attorney who represents Democrats, Republicans. I mean, he has really, really be, been the nexus of, of helping people cash in at the, at the, you know, at the junction of politics and media and, and publishing. So. Uh, your book's biggest revelation isn't out yet, but what's... Uh. Uh, can you, well, what can you tell us? Yet. I mean, what, what a lot of people have focused on, I mean, is some of the White House stuff. I mean, I think there, there was a moment, um, and I have to keep this clean, but um, when Hillary Clinton, when they were just, just trying to, to plan the, the timing of the bin Laden raid, someone mentioned, well, I mean, that's Saturday, it's the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and the president will be there, and if he's not there, people will know that something might be up. And she uh, quite memorably said something about the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and I will leave it to readers to uh, see what she said, because I can't say it on national television or national web. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> True or false, this book hurts your ability to report on Washington in the future? Uh, I'm going to guess false. Uh, people have speculated the contrary, but I'm going to guess false. Okay. Uh, and finally, one piece of advice for young journalists. Um, stay as outside the rope line as you can. I mean, people, I mean, again, in an era in which punditry has sort of replaced reporting as the gold standard in journalism, um, I mean, nothing is more important than actually working hard and talking to people and getting the truth and also getting out of Washington. I mean, that's the best thing about my job is it enables me to leave Washington and actually talk to as many um, people out who don't live here as possible. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for taking the time to join us today. And thank you to everyone who submitted their questions. You can read an excerpt of Mark's book at abcnews.com slash this week. You can follow the show on Twitter at This Week ABC and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash this week ABC.